Well, hello there. I'm watching The Defenders on Disney+, Plus, so you don't have to. So let's talk about Jessica Jones Season 2. So as you look at Jessica Jones Season 2, really when you look at the first season, the first season is actually one of the best Defender shows. And the first season is one of the best Defender shows because the villain in it is great. It's different. It's a villain who is a, does mind control. And there's a lot you can say socially about how that villain, kind of the Kilgrave villain, kind of adapts as the season goes. And really kind of the push and the story around that villain. It's really that kind of perfect first season. As you get into the second season, it's obvious that kind of as the writers kind of transition and the story, they didn't have that kind of perfect social commentary story or that perfect villain to go in season two. Because really season two is about Jessica finding herself. It's about Jessica knowing, finding out who she is, going and finding out how she got her powers. Where there, the basic story is that she, when she was a child, she had a car wreck. Um, one of the doctors transitioned to her hospital that did gene therapy to help her recover. That's how she got her superpowers. And as she goes through the season, it's trying to be that PI and investigate that. And eventually, she encounter, encounters the fact that her mother um, also survived the wreck and also had gene therapy. But when she had it, there's this anger issue and this really extreme anger issue that kind of keeps her in the dark. And that's why Jessica has never seen her and kind of kind of been there around her or has not encountered her before and really as you look at the season as a whole i think the biggest problem here is the pace and the fact that there's really no clear villain so when you look at the pace the pace is odd in this season where it kind of goes from jessica investigating trying to find her mother and really they about i think it's either episode seven or eight they the actress Janet, they basically say the mother is alive and that Jessica figures out that it's her mother. So it's not even the conclusion of the season. And the actress that plays the mother, Janet McTeer, does a good job here. She chooses the scenery real well, but it's kind of very extreme because she's supposed to have that anger issue. And sometimes the extreme kind of goes comes over the top. And then as you get to the end of the season, they kind of wrap the story up with the mother. And so then it becomes more about they've kind of wrapped the story up that jessica's kind of adapted to the mother she wants to help her she wants to kind of get her over her issues and then it kind of transitions to where trish played by rachel taylor is becomes the villain where she's the one that's going and trying to get gene therapy because she's jealous of jessica and can be wants to be a superhero and really it's all about setting up for season three the last like two episodes and i think that's really where the struggle with this season is it's that pace it's that pace of where they're going in the story and really what are the intentions of these people i think kristen ritter as jessica is great but after that it gets a little bit more of a challenge